Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wally Rada. I'm your host for tonight's Biz Talk 41. Welcome. Thank you for joining me here in Singapore. Tonight, we're talking about you being out of your comfort zone. Yes, out of your comfort zone. I wonder how many of us here know what our comfort zone is? How many of you can give me an example of your comfort zone? What is your comfort zone? For some of us, our comfort zone is very simple. It's the way you look. It's looking in the mirror and saying to yourself, oh, I look like this because I feel I'm in my comfort zone. Behaving the way you do because you're in your comfort zone. For some of us, the way we dress because we believe we look slimmer if we wear certain colors, especially females. They pick their dresses carefully because one dress makes them look fatter than the other. One dress makes them look better than the other. They don't want to go out of their comfort zone. Some girls will wear a low cut back on their dress. Some girls will wear um, a, a blouse with long sleeves because they have no confidence wearing a blouse with short sleeves. They don't want to go out of the comfort zone. Let's talk about the comfort zone. How do people become successful in today's society? What makes people successful in today's society? Let's talk about that. Let me look at all of you. What makes you successful today? Do you think that people can be successful simply by living in the comfort zone? They can't. Look at somebody like Nasik Ain. The first time I met him, he was a loser. Now he's studying with us. Now he, every time I speak to him, he, sound tense, he sounds 10 times more confident in himself and the way he speaks because he has left his comfort zone. He has left his comfort zone. He's no longer the shy schoolboy, immature schoolboy he was the first time I met him. He deserves a big hand. Congratulations, Nacy. Okay, so people have to leave their comfort zone. What is your comfort zone? Can anybody tell me what is your comfort zone? Who wants to share with me? Can you wave? I want somebody to open up and tell me what is your comfort zone? Let's um, call on a few of you. Let's see who's listening to what I'm saying. Um, let's start with, uh, who can I pick here? There's so many um, good looking people here. Uh, Norberto. Velarde. Hello, Norberto. Would you like to unmute your microphone and talk to me, Norberto? Hello, where are you from, sir? Hello, Norberto. Where are you from? Hi, where are you from? I can't hear you, Norberto. You have to fix your microphone. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, I can't hear you, mate. I'll have to come back to you. There's something wrong with your microphone, Norberto. You might want to get it fixed. Okay, let's go to another person. Um, let's talk to... Uh, Vevi Suryati. Hello, Vevi. You want to open your microphone and talk to me, young lady? Hi, how are you tonight? Yeah. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Tell me, Vevi, what is your comfort zone? What do you think is something you do because it's your comfort zone? Can you give me an example? Uh, sorry, sir. I just joined. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, because, right. yeah. Okay, let me just ask you. What is something that you do every day because it's within your comfort zone? Something that you're not scared of doing. What is it? You drive a car? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, you ride before, a bicycle? No. Before I I work uh, in Singapore. Uh, right. As, yeah, as helper only. <laughs> yeah, so okay, right. do, yeah, do house. And that, and now what do you do now? Are you working now? Now, no. Now I at home uh, go uh, now uh, back to Indonesia. Okay. So what yeah. do you want to do in Indonesia? What's your dream? What do you want to do with your life? Yeah, my dreams, yeah. I You want to start your own business? You want to work in Singapore again? What do you want to do? Uh, I will back to Singapore uh, right. and more money. So uh I keep money, okay. save money, yeah, keep money, okay. then maybe next time I can uh, do my business. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah. you want to break out of your comfort zone and run your own business, is that right? Yeah. You want? Okay, good. I'll talk to you again shortly. Thank you, Vevi. Nice to see you tonight. Good evening. Thank you.
Okay, let's talk to someone else. Who we got here? Um, let's talk to uh, somebody else who wants to share with me. Um, let's talk to someone who looks pretty depressed tonight. Who have I got here? Okay, um, Hem Lata. Hem Lata, would you like to open your microphone and talk to me? Are you there, Hem? Hem? Hello? No? Okay. Angelito, Angelito Velasco, would you like to talk to me? Hi, Angelito. Where are you from? Hi, Hi where are you Mr. from? Wally. How are Hi, you? How are yeah, you? Where I'm, are you? I'm working here. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Philippines and I'm working currently in Saudi Arabia. Great. Excellent. Tell me, what is something that you consider your comfort zone? What is yeah, there something about you that you'd like to break out of? Yes, my comfort zone is uh, I want um, I'm currently here at the office working as clerical yeah. for finance, but I want to I want to uh, explore more in okay. our project uh, project okay. in our All business. Right. I, I remember what you told me, but uh, uh, Angelique, uh, I think you need let's go back to something that I think your comfort zone is you have to break out of your comfort zone and feel the confidence and be able to go into business without losing your job. Is that right? Yes. Yes. All right. And that's a big comfort zone for you, mate. We, we, we need to keep working on that. And hopefully tonight I'll be able to help you with that. All right, mate. Thank you. Thank Good you. On you buddy. It's my pleasure. You're welcome. Um, okay. Let's talk to Charmin. Charmin, where are you, Charmin? I saw you here and now you've run away again. All right, we'll come back to you, Charmin. Let's go to somebody else. Belinda Binas Brown. Hello, Belinda. Can I can you unmute your microphone and say good evening to me? Hi, Melinda. Where are yes. you from? Where are you from? Young Hi, lady? Mr. Yes. Hello, Mr. Wadi. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you, Belinda. How are you? Yes. I'm fine. Thank you. And yes. where are you? Uh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you talking to me from tonight? I'm talking to you from Lebanon. Lebanon, Beirut, my favorite city. My great grandmother lived yes. in Beirut. The last oh. time I was there was in 1981. And after somebody pulled out a clashing cough in my face, I swore I would never go back to Beirut. But I promise you one day I will come back. It's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. So tell me, how long have you been living in Lebanon? Yeah, I would love to see you in person. I'd love to. What part of Lebanon are you in, ma'am? Yes, I am in Beirut. Beirut, where in the in yes. uh, where around? Uh, I know around, around Rab Rabia. If you know Rabia, see Rabia. Uh, Rabia is next to La Rocha, next to Hamra. Where? Uh, no, no, no. It's uh, on the other side. On the other side. Yeah, I haven't been yes. to the other side for quite a few years. The last time I was there was 1982 when my my favorite grandmother died. I was her first grandson, oh. and I was the lucky one to inherit all the problems that she left behind. But um, I love wow, Beirut. Wow. Um, I love Beirut. It's a beautiful country. Tell me, um, Belinda, yeah. what is something that you would like to break out of your comfort zone with? Okay, uh, my daily routine. You know, uh, yeah. usually, you know, when I make my daily routine like you know usually yeah. I cook for my family and uh, when I do my job I think I am okay with that but uh, since I know about your uh, your uh, education that yes, you are offering in Kingstone yes. so I have been an interest to break my comfort zone that I said I need to explore and I need to learn in that university so have someday you already, I have you already registered with us ma'am Yes, yes. I, I've been okay. uh, three months studying in uh, All right, Kingstown. Great. Okay. Well, I haven't seen you in any of the classes yet, but I, I don't teach that often. I'm a H head of department um, and I miss teaching, but sometimes you will get to see me eventually. What's, what module are you studying at the moment? I'm on the third month in module. Okay. And you're doing yes. a postgraduate diploma or a diploma? Yes. Yes. postgraduate okay. a diploma you're doing yeah. a diploma once you get up yes. to the second or third the last module you'll probably see me and it's great to hear that you finally stepped out of your comfort zone i'm deeply yes. honored to see that and hopefully one day when i come to lebanon maybe we can um enjoy a cup of turkish coffee and um an argila or sure. something together it would be an absolute wow. pleasure yeah. thank you so much y give my yes give my warmest regards to lebanon and please Keep okay. on smiling. Um, and if there's anything I can do, please let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahdi. You. Thank you, Mr. You too. Thank you. Uh, Gwyn Tai So, would you like to talk to me, Gwyn? Hi, Gwyn. Where are you from today? You're from the Philippines, right, Gwyn? No, 
Hello, Gwyn. Yeah, you I can you hear me? I can hear you, young lady. You look extremely happy tonight. I'm so happy to see you again. How are you? I'm fine. I'm so good. Thank you and so much. That's yeah, okay, Gwyn. You... Tell me, what is it that you would like to break out of your comfort zone with? What is it in your life? There's something that you've always wanted to do, but you've been afraid to do it. Can you give me an example? Yeah, of course. Uh, when I graduated from university, yes. my, par my parents, and um, they want me to be a teacher. But then right. I, yeah, I feel that that, that uh, job not fits uh, to, to my personality and my dreams. So then I, you know, I, I, I quit um, their they, 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 they want and then I become a, a secretary in a company a big four a audit company in the world so right. now yeah so so now I'm, I'm trying to to gain more knowledge to enhance my skills in in my my shop and I want to to, to gain more knowledge in the future to to develop more in my career later uh, not because I I, I I register this course because I want to to get more money, and then I will get more money. But the the most important thing is I want me to 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 gain more new thing, not just in in Vietnam, but around the world. And I can uh, you know satisfy my curiosity and and my 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 knowledge because I always curious about a lot of things in the world. But um, when I study at university, the 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 key uh, barrier is, is the language. So now I'm so happy to meet you and meet a lot of people that can share their their their, their thoughts, share their story to to understand each other. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Well. Listen, you wanted to become a teacher. I never wanted to become an academic. I never wanted to become a professor. I wanted to become James Bond's secret agent. But unfortunately, I got bored after completing six months of, you know, military uh, officer, military training. I went through it. I jumped out of gas chambers. I jumped out of parachutes. Um, I, I did everything. Um, and unfortunately, after going finishing, they put me in a government office and told me to cut newspaper articles out for the next two years. So I resigned. So that was my aspiration. Um, and then I went into human resources and became very successful at it. And the next thing I knew I was teaching um, and I had been doing it for 38 years. So for you, your, your, your dream was your parents wanted to become an academic. I didn't want to become an academic, but tell me now to give up, I would never give it up because it's the most satisfying job in the world to see people like you learn and benefit from um, what I teach. And I thank you for sharing your inspiration with us. And I hopefully um, throughout the coming months, um, you'll get the confidence in the experience you have. And please, you feel free, you're studying with us. If you ever have any questions, you'd like some assistance in relation to what you're learning, you're most welcome to call me. Thank you very much. I'll come back to you shortly. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, what we've just heard here are from people about their real aspirations to break out of the comfort zone. But I'm sad to say their comfort zone is not their real comfort zone. What is your real comfort zone? There's a difference between what you think your comfort zone is and what is your real comfort zone. All right. For Nguyen, her parents wanted her to teach. Was that really the comfort zone she couldn't go out from? Or was it that she was lacked the confidence in her ability? Or was it that she didn't feel that it was the right occupation for her? She's taken on a much more serious occupation. She's working for one of the biggest audit companies in the world. That's much more serious than teaching. Um, it's a much bigger responsibility, but the responsibility is in a different area. It's no longer educating children and making them the future of the world. It's now about um, auditing companies and enabling companies to stay on the right track and become successful. Am I right, Gwyn? Can you wave your hand, Gwyn, if you agree with me? Good girl. Wave your hand, Gwyn. Don't be shy, Gwyn. Don't put your hand like this. That means you lack confidence. Look at the camera and wave your hand, young lady. Good girl. Excellent. Thank you so much. So Gwyn has not yet broken out of her comfort zone. And I'll tell Gwyn what she needs to do to break out of her comfort zone. Gwyn has to say to herself this, Gwyn, and look at me and listen. You have to say to yourself, 
that maybe teaching wasn't my inspiration, but one day I want to be able to train other people at work so they can better do their job and I can get promoted. You might only be a clerical or a secretary now, but there's nothing to stop you from developing other people because for you to move forward in your career, young lady, part of leadership, which you require in order to get promoted, is to develop other people. Do you understand what I'm saying, Gwyn? So now your focus is to learn now that you're studying with us and then to start building your leadership qualities so you can get out of your comfort zone and have the confidence to develop the people below you. And the more people that you develop below you, eventually you're going to grow and further your career. Because, you know, companies don't employ you to be a clerk all your life, Gwyn. Companies employ a young lady like you to give you a career path and promote you. Do you understand what I mean, Gwyn? Good. Okay, we'll talk again soon. So ladies and gentlemen, the most common, the most common um, hurdle that people or women um, face in their life, in their comfort zone, is when they look at themselves in the mirror. Um, most women look at themselves in the mirror and for, for the whole of their life, they look the same. You know, I say, I say to many job applicants that come and apply for jobs to me, um, you know, you're applying for a job, but you're applying for a job as a receptionist in a five-star hotel. Do you think you have the appearance to work in a five-star hotel? And they look at me and say, no. Are you prepared to change and dress like a receptionist in a five-star hotel? Oh, no, no. My mummy and daddy wouldn't approve of me wearing a miniskirt. So, what is your comfort zone? Is your comfort zone what mummy and daddy want? That's wrong. Is your comfort zone what you think your boyfriend likes? That's wrong. Is your comfort zone what society wants of you? That's wrong. Do you all understand that? That is wrong. Your comfort zone is what is going to make you successful. It is your dream to become something that you're not today. Let's take this young lady. When I first saw her in one of my earlier Biz Talks, she didn't have the confidence she has today. I am so proud of her tonight. She is smiling. She looks so professional. And every time I see her, she is getting more confident. That is because this young lady has stepped out of the comfort zone. But how far has she stepped out? Has she stepped out by half a meter? by a mile or by half a mile, she's probably stepped out by 500 meters. She's got a long way to step out. When I'm not, I'm not giving you a hard time. I want to push your limit. Do you understand that, Gwyn? I want you to go all the way, young lady. By next year, I want you to tell me, Wally, I got promoted. Do you understand that, young lady? When you graduate with us, I want you to get a promotion. And one day I'm going to come and visit you in Vietnam and you're going to buy me dinner. Okay. Is that a deal? All right. Good. So what I want you to do, guys, is think outside your comfort zone. Deng, um, Deng Jiani, you have a comfort zone too. For years, Deng, you've lived within your comfort zone. But what is it that you've never had the guts to do? What is it? There's something, Deng, that you're holding back. Look at Vivi Suryati. Vivi, there's also something about you that you're not doing. You're hiding in your comfort zone, all right? The next time you want to work overseas, there is a job that you want, but you don't, you're always being scared to do it because you think you're not good enough or you don't want to do it. Do you understand that, Vivi? That is wrong. Start saying to yourself, I work as this but I did it because I needed the money. Next time I go to work overseas, I want this and I will not accept anything less than this. Do you understand that, Vivi? You know, Vivi, Indonesians, Filipinos are some of the best, best customer service oriented people in the world. Indonesian females, Filipino females are some of the most popular office and customer service orientated jobs in the world. All you need is to give yourself the level of confidence to break out of that comfort zone. 
because for all you know, is all your life you've seen women from Indonesia go overseas and do these jobs because they can make money. But is it the right job for you? You need to ask yourself. Do you understand that, Vivi? I want you to break out of your freaking comfort zone. I want you to look at yourself in the mirror, Vivi, every day and say to yourself, in six months' time, I want to go overseas and do this job, which people told me I could never do. What do I need to achieve it? What do I need Wally and the school to do to help me achieve it? Do you understand that, Vivi? The longer you live in the box you're living in now, Vivi, is you're going to be back to where you were before. Do you understand that, Vivi? Yes or no? Good. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, Nazgul, the same goes for you, young lady. Every time I see you, you look more motivated. And I know that one day you're going to be CEO of one of the largest companies in the world. I can see it in your beautiful face. But Nazgul, again, there's something that tells me about you that there is a certain limit to your comfort zone. Whether it's something you're afraid to do in order to achieve your goals because financially you're afraid or something that you're not prepared to do because you're afraid of the risk it would bring on you and your family. But unfortunately, Nazgul, unless you're prepared to step into that dark zone and go down the tunnel, what is going to happen, Nazgul, is you're never going to experience the success at the other end of the tunnel. Do you understand me, Nazgul? So what I want to do, Nazgul, with you is I want to push you outside your business limits. I want you to start thinking of what is the biggest thing you have never done in business that you've always wanted to do. Is it to find investors? Is it to go public? Is it to take a company overseas and do something that's never been done? I want you to start asking you those questions, Nazgul, and I want you to start thinking about that as we go along, whether you're studying with us or whether you meet me in biz talk, I want to see you step out of the comfort zone. Do you understand that, Nazgul? Thank you, ma'am. All right, guys. So comfort zone, let's talk about the comfort zone. Let's just go back to my slide presentation and let's talk about it. Okay, what is the comfort zone? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the comfort zone is where you are now. You're all hiding in this little circle and this little box. You're all hiding with your schoolgirl appearance, the way you dress because you've always dressed like that, the way you wear your makeup, the way you tie your hair back because it was fashionable at schoolgirls to wear long hair. You've gone into the professional business world, Gwyn, but you still wear the same appearance you wore when you're at school. This is only an example, Gwyn nothing to do about you. It's an example. So most girls always adapt the same appearance they adapted in school. Some of them will not try a new look. They will not wear different colors. They will not wear different makeup. Simply because when they're at school, they and their girlfriends always looked and behaved that way. That's an example of a comfort zone. All right. For others, for you gentlemen like Aliu, He's probably like me. When he goes out to drink beer, he knows he should only drink this sort of beer because he's afraid to go outside his comfort zone. But if Alu doesn't try new places and drink different types of beer, he will never be able to experience that. Okay? Never be able to experience it. You've all eaten different foods. How many of you have eaten? Um, you know, I went, I went to Paris. In Paris... I went to a French restaurant and ordered steak. But when I ordered the steak, I couldn't read French correctly. And the steak I ordered was raw meat, raw meat, not cooked at all. Okay. But I had to get out of my comfort zone and try it. Because if I didn't try it, I just spent $200 on my main course. And I would have had to pay for the plate anyway. The fact that I ate steak tartare for the first time in my life, cooked by a Frenchman or prepared by a French waiter with a silver spoon, I now cannot stop eating steak tartare. I never expected to eat raw meat, but I had to break out of my comfort zone. So where is your comfort zone? Your comfort zone is where you are now. 
And what does it mean to break out? To break out of your comfort zone is when the magic happens. For Gwinty, it's when one day she walks into the office and her boss says, Gwyn, I've never seen you look so spectacular and so confident. What is it that you've done recently to make you look so young and so professional? Now, it could be that Gwyn just simply changes her makeup. It could be that Gwyn goes out tomorrow and buys new glasses. It could be that Gwyn next week goes to a different hairdressing salon with a young Korean sexy, good-looking male hairstylist wearing his black leather pants and white t-shirt. And Gwyn says to this guy, listen, I've looked like this all my life. I now work for a big audit company. Give me a trendy new look so all my bosses will remember me. It could be that she doesn't. It could be that she just stays the way she is. But it could be that her voice protracts more confidence. And what it needs to do is it needs to bring out to a, an element where she feels excited. It's where she does something that she has never done before, okay? If you just do the things you're doing every day, none of you are going outside your comfort zone. None of you are living to the fullest potential of your life. Do you all understand that? Everyone wave your hands. Don't shake your heads like monkeys. Don't cross your fingers. Everybody wave your hands like confident young professionals. Come on, I want to see your hands being waved. Everyone. Good, excellent. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So you need to look at, or we need to talk about tonight, 10 ways to step out of your comfort zone and overcome your fear. Overcoming your fear, Gwyn, is you being able to actually take risks and grow in a way that you've never grown before. But unfortunately for people like you, Gwyn, and all the others, uh, Vivi, you're scared to do that because you're not sure of what's on the other side of the twirl or what's on the other side of the lake. Vivi is scared to go to um, work in Singapore again, not knowing what will happen if she tries to go to a job which she thinks is too good for her because she has never had the confidence to even try. And because of that, she will never be able to experience what's hanging at the other end because if you don't try and fail, you never succeed. And that's a fact of life. The truth is comfort zones are not really about comfort. They are about fear. I want all of you, all of you, to look at yourself in the mirror, Gwyn, and that includes you tonight. And I want you to all ask yourselves and write it on a piece of paper. What are the four biggest fears you've ever feared in your life? Are they drinking alcohol? Are they um, trying to get a job better than what you're doing now because you think you're not good enough? Are they going out with some guy that you really like, but you're scared to ask him? Are they to buy a bigger house? Are they to get your driver's license? I want everyone to put four of your greatest fears on a piece of paper today. Does everybody understand that? Four elements of your greatest fears. And I don't want you telling me, Gwyn, I fear teaching because that's bullshit. You don't fear it. It's just that you've never tried it. And one day you're going to have to do it because in your job to get promoted, you have to lead people. Part of leading people is training them, teaching them, and developing them. It's just a different type of teaching, Gwyn. So I want you to have a serious look in the mirror tonight. Do you understand that, young lady? Good. Okay. There's a famous saying by Laozi, and I'm sure you all know how Laozi, who Laozi is. When I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. I want everybody to say that now out loud. Repeat after me. When I let go of what I am, everyone, I want to see your lips move. When I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. All right. Can everybody write that down? And I want you to look in the mirror every night and I want you to say that every night before you go to bed. 
Does everybody understand that? Okay. Steve Jobs. Does everybody know Steve Jobs? Elu, do you know Steve Jobs? Wave your hand, Elu. You know Steve Jobs, right? Yeah, okay. Well, Steve Jobs said, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow know what you truly want to become. Steve Jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is a reality. This is a reality. When I went to school, my dream was to become the James Bond of Australia. My dream was to become Maxwell Smart. You know Maxwell Smart, Agent 99 on TV? That was my dream. I wanted to become a secret agent with a shoe that had a telephone. I wanted to have a pen that fired bullets. I went to university. I graduated. And then I went and spent six months trying to become a secret agent in the Australian Defense Department. What a waste of time. The only thing about the six months was all the good-looking girls that I met. But that was about it. Six months later, I resigned. And then I went and got a job, my first job paid me $12,000 in salary, but it wasn't being a secret agent. It was working in an office, um, writing HR programs and sales programs, all right? And it was never my aspiration. My aspiration was to become a secret agent. Did I ever think I could earn $12,000 a month? No freaking way. I just graduated from university, top of my class. I graduated in criminology, criminal law. Okay, I was a criminologist. And I thought, if I'm a criminologist, I'm going to make a great spy. But the Australian government told me, oh, no, to become a spy, you have to spend three years sitting at the desk cutting newspaper articles, then you you become a junior spy. So what did I say? Thank you very much. That is not what I want. So I got out of my, I got out of my comfort zone, I went and found another job. Okay, do you all understand where I'm coming from? Your comfort zone. Do you follow that? You all have a comfort zone. But the problem is some of you don't realize what that comfort zone is. Okay, you need to wake up and ask yourself, what is my comfort zone? Do you understand that, Josie Garcia? Are you there, Josie? Can you wave your hand, Josie? Good girl, excellent. Do you understand that? Um, Juvian Lopez, can you wave your hand, Juvian? Okay, good. I'll talk to you shortly, Juvian. Do you understand that, Elsie, Anoop? Elsie, wake up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good, excellent. Julie Kang, do you understand what I'm saying? Julie, wave your hand. Julie, wake up. Don't go to sleep on me. Okay, good, excellent. Odisa, do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Odisa, wave your hand. Wake up. Okay, good. All of you guys are living inside your comfort zone. Look at you, Odessa. When I look at you, you look like a sad young lady who's not enjoying her life. And the reason that is, is because there's something that's stopping you from doing what you want to do because you're afraid of the result at the other end of the tunnel. Do you understand that, Odessa? Okay, good. Excellent. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, uh, where have I got? Maylene, do you understand what I said, Maylene? Boy, boy. Wave your hand, Maylene. Yes, Maylene, wave your hand. Wave, 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 wave. Good girl. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You're smiling tonight. I'm so proud of you. All right. So what I want you to do is ask yourselves, why, what is it that's keeping you from stepping out, Hussein? What is it, Gabriel, that you're hiding from? What is it that you really want to do that you've never done before? For me, I've never been, I've never want, I've always been scared to get a tattoo and I probably never will because it's way outside my comfort zone. All right. So what is in your comfort zone? All right. Let's go back to my PowerPoint. So Steve Jobs had what he had as a comfort zone. He wanted to become one of the biggest and most powerful people in the world. But he had a comfort zone. He knew that he was a genius technically, but he knew he could do not do everything himself. And that's why Steve Jobs said, when you hire people who are good at what they do, give them the tools and let them do the job. 
Do not try to teach them how to do it. But Steve Jobs broke out. He broke out of his comfort zone by taking the company Apple from the backyard of his house to a multinational corporation. Because when he started Apple, it was running out of his backyard garage. And it took him about two years along with Tim Cook and some others to have the guts to actually take it public. And what a great move that was. They're now one of the biggest companies in the world because Steve Jobs stepped out of his comfort zone. Okay, what, is, what are the 10 ways to come out of your comfort zone and overcome your fear? One, you have to recognize and understand what is, what's outside of your comfort zone. What is it that's outside? What are the things that you believe are worth doing, but you are afraid of doing yourself because of the potential of people laughing at you, being disappointed in you, or you failing? Well, if you're afraid of failure, you're never going to be successful because success only comes with failure, Gwyn. That's the reality, young lady. You cannot be successful unless you fail. All right. Draw a circle and write those things outside the circle. In the circle, I want you to write down what you're comfortable thing, what you're comfortable with now. Outside the circle, I want you to write four things that you fear. Everyone. I want to see it for homework by tomorrow. I want a circle with something that you're very comfortable with now. And I want four things that you are too scared to do today. Four things about things that you're scared to do in your life. Number two, you have to become clear about what you're aiming to overcome. Okay. So let's go back to the example of young ladies coming out of school and looking the same as they looked at school. And it's only an example. You look like that at school because all your girlfriends look like that. You all look like that. You all had long black hair. You all had ribbons. You all wore glasses. You all tied your hair back. You all wore simple makeup. You all wear long jeans. You didn't wear mini skirts. That was the way you did it. Because peer pressure at school, you all look the same. But is it right for you to continue with that all your life? Or is it something that you want to change, but you're afraid of how the people around you will feel? Maybe Gwyn is afraid that her mother won't like her new look. Maybe Gwyn is afraid that her boyfriend that she loves will reject her new look. Maybe Gwyn is afraid that when she gets promoted, she'll be earning more money than her boyfriend and she'll want someone else. I don't know, but I'm just saying, are these your fears? Are these something that you worry about every night? I'm not pointing at you, Gwyn. I'm just using you as an example. Please forgive me. All right. Okay. I'm using you as an example. All right, Vivi. And it's the same with you, Vivi. What you did in Singapore, the job you had before was okay. But do you really want to go back to that? What are you afraid of? Have you ever applied for an office job in Singapore? Have you ever tried to come here and work as an office girl or as a uh, restaurant a waitress in a restaurant or even in a hotel doing room service or um, housekeeping? It's still better than working what you did before. Why don't you do it? What are you afraid of? Is it you're afraid that you're too old or you don't look right? Well, you're not too old. You can certainly give yourself a new look by just making yourself look younger and the way you dress. But are you afraid to do that? Why are you afraid? Are you afraid because of what people say? Are you afraid because of what your husband wants? Are you afraid because you don't have the confidence? What is it that you're afraid of? Okay, for example, let me talk to you about this. How many of you can actually just introduce themselves and tell me about their lives in 30 seconds? Who wants to try? I want you to introduce yourself in English, give your first name, where you were born, um, what you do, and what your dream is. You have 30 seconds. 
let's start with, I'm going to do it to three people. Um, let's start with Hussein Mohammed Mufazil. Hello, Hussein. You have 30 seconds, Hussein. Unmute your microphone. Introduce yourself, Hussein. Okay, good evening to all. My name is Hussein MD Mufazil, shortly Mufazil. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh, 37 year old. I'm working in Singapore as a site supervisor. I can you also the, join the, this course. I have big dream is travel the whole world one bit. So I have ready the uh, travel in four countries, but COVID last year, so it stuck uh, 2020. From the next year or this year, I have to plan three more country travel. Okay, That's thank you, Mufaisal. Thank you for introducing yourself. You speak with confidence, Mufaisal. It's good to see. And you need to step out of your comfort zone, Mufaisal, and we need to start working on you achieving your next dream. All right, I'll talk to you soon, Mufaisal. Thank you. Thank Let's you, try sir. someone else. You're welcome, Mufaisal. Let's try someone else. Julie Kiang, would you like to try? Are you there, Julie? Hello, Julie. Would you like to talk to me? Hi, Julie. Would you like to introduce yourself confidently? Can you do it? Yes. Go can ahead. You yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Julie Kaiser Sim. I'm from Myanmar. Now I'm working in Singapore. I'm a helper. My dream is I want to be the nurse and I want to help all the patients. Good. Okay, Excellent. Thank you. Good. Excellent. Um, you did very well. And what you need to do now, young lady, is you need to put on a piece of paper. What is it that's stopping you from achieving your dream? I want you to write down what is it that's stopping you? What are you scared of? You say you're in Singapore as a helper. You came to Singapore as a helper because you need money. But there's plenty of other jobs in Singapore that an educated young lady can do, especially if you're studying with Kingston once you graduate. So I want you to get a piece of paper tonight, put helper in a circle, because that's where your comfort zone is now. And I want you to draw four other circles and tell me what you're afraid of and why is it that you're not trying to get out of that circle and do it. Do you understand that, young lady? Good, excellent. Okay, who, who else would like to try? Somebody else? Do you understand what I said, Julie? Are you there, Julie? Hello, Julie. Are you there, Julie? Do you understand what I said, Julie? Yes, I'm understand. Good on you, Julie. I'm so proud of you. Keep up the good work, Julie. Okay, okay. let's. You're welcome, young lady. Let's try someone else. Who else would like to try? Ah, uh, Persilin, Persilin, ah, uh, Polygon. Would you like to try? Okay, can you unmute your microphone, Persilin? Go ahead. Hello, sir. Hi, Intr Persilin introduce Polygon. Yeah, go on. 36 years old from the Philippines. I'm currently working here in Turkey as a, a nanny. Okay, I want to go back to the Philippines to have a business on my own. But right. unfortunately, with this uh, situation of COVID, I cannot go back to the Philippines to uh, okay. All right. okay, do my own so business. All right, Priscilla, tell me, what is it that you're afraid of? Are you afraid of the finance? Are you afraid of COVID? Or are you really just afraid of going back to the Philippines and failing? What is it that you're really afraid of? Tell yes, me the I truth. Am, I am really afraid to go back in the Philippines because I am abroad for almost 11 years uh, working abroad. I am, okay. I am afraid to go back in the Philippines to okay. raise up my own business and get okay. failed. Priscilla, let, uh, let me ask you the other thing. Is your dream... Let's stop telling ourselves lies. Is your dream really to go back to the Philippines or is your dream to be successful somewhere else and you're only saying you want to go back to the Philippines because you're saying that to make your other family or your friends happy? What is your real dream? Because for many young Filipinos, once they leave the Philippines, the only time they want to go back is when they retire. For a young lady like you that has worked overseas for many years and wants to get on with her career, can I ask you a question? I want you to tell me the truth. Why okay. do you really want to go back to the Philippines? I want to make my own business. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. Yeah. So the reason you want to go back is only when you have enough money 
to start your own yeah. empire. Is yeah. that right? Okay. So what yeah. I need you to do is you need to lay down the hurdles, Persilin. Mm -hmm. Your current hurdle is money. That's your fear, mm -hmm. right? And what you want to do is money to set up a business. It's money to make yourself successful because mm -hmm. your fear is if you go back and you fail, you'll be stuck there. Is that right? Yes. All right, good yes. girl. Yes. I want you to get out of your zone, comfort zone, and I want you to start thinking beyond being afraid. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Because okay, personally, okay. for as long as you say, I'm afraid, it's never going to happen. Is that right? Yes, sir. It's never going to happen. So there's two things you have to do, Persilin. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, if this is my dream and I want it to happen, what is it that I have to do to prove my, to myself that I'm prepared to try and take the risk? Because if I don't try, I will die before I realize what I could have done, right? you understand that? And if you say to yourself at the end of the day that no matter how hard you think you're afraid, then I hate to say, Persilin, you need to start looking at what are the options. Do you start a business in another country first, then go back to the Philippines? Do you try to start the business online while you're still in Turkey? Or do you try to start a business um in Turkey before you go back to the Philippines. So these are all questions you need to ask yourself because you're in the same dilemma as some of the others. You're afraid yeah. of something, but what you're afraid of is not really a fear. It's basically it's basically the psychology and your psychology is being blocked by the common denominator, which is money. Do you understand that? Yeah. Because if you had a million dollars today, Persilin, I bet you wouldn't be in Turkey, right? You go back yeah. to the Philippines, buy a nice little condo, you keep yourself two or three hundred thousand dollars, and you'd gamble that and start a business, right? And if you fail, then you'd go back to Turkey and work as a nanny yeah. again. But you don't have the money to do that. So the longer you sit back in your glass jar and say to yourself, I'm gonna keep dreaming, it's never gonna happen, young lady. Do you understand? Okay. So what you need to do, Persilin, is you need to ask yourself, do I have a business plan? Or do I fear writing one? Do I know what sort of business I want? Is there people in the Philippines that will finance my business to make it successful? And if that is, what are the options I have? I need you, uh, Persilin, before I see you again, to put down at least four or five things that you're most scared of about starting that business this year. Because if you don't do it this year, Persilin, it's never going to happen. I'm telling you the truth. Do you understand that? Yes. And I don't want to upset you, young lady. You know me. I'm, I'm a motivator. I'm an Australian. And I've helped so many Filipinos in my life. It's not funny. But the funny thing is they're all now working all over the world. They're all earning big salaries. And yes. sometimes I go to the hotel where they're working and all I get is a cup of coffee. I don't even get hello because they're too busy. All right? But I'm telling you, as a Filipino you need to be proud of your nationality because Filipinos are one of the hardest working nationalities in the yeah. world. You are so good at customer service and running business that it's a shame to see you dreaming all your life. Do you understand that, young lady? All right, I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you very much. All right, let's go back to my presentation, everyone. All right, so... How does this fear apply to you uniquely? As the young lady just said, she's scared of going back to her country because she's afraid that if she goes back and the business fails, she'll have no money to get out again. So are you afraid of walking up to people and introducing yourself in social situations? No, you just did it. Is it because you are insecure about the sound of your voice? Well, let me see, say that when I heard the young lady working in Singapore um, as a helper, and when I heard the lady in Turkey working as a babysitter, they are insecure because when I ask them what they're afraid of, they have they cut they they still say it like their voice goes down. They introduce themselves with a high pitch. Hey, I'm Wally. Uh, what am I afraid of? I want to go back to the Philippines to start my own business. Their voice pitch drops. OK, so usually if you're afraid of something, it's not because you're afraid. It's because you feel insecure. 
both of them are afraid. If one of them gives up the job as a helper and goes back to Myanmar, she'll live in poverty. She's afraid to do that. If she tries to find a better job and her employer fires her, she's insecure about that. So what she needs to do is get herself qualifications so when she's ready, she can start looking for a job and then say to her um, employer, I'm out. I don't want to be a helper anymore. Because then she knows she can go back to Myanmar, she can apply and come back and do another job. So it's insecurity. And insecurity is all psychological. Like the lady in Lebanon, it took her some time to get enough confidence to study with us. But that was thanks to me and all the motivation I did. And I'm so proud of her. All right. It's the same as the lady who's running her business, Ms. Nazgul. It's the same as her. This lady has so much confidence, but there's a sense of insecurity in her mind about what she's going to do to go all the way. It's the same as Vivi. Vivi knows that going back to her country is not what she really wants because she can earn a lot more money to send to her family if she's overseas. But it's a sense of insecurity that worries her whether if she comes here, it's going to be the right job or whether she has enough money, even if she does that job, to keep her family there. It's a sense of insecurity. You're afraid of being ignored. You're afraid of being told that you failed. Failure is okay. No one will ever ignore you. The only people that will ignore you is if you ignore yourself and always live inside your comfort zone. No one can be successful unless they step out of their comfort zone. The truth is the comfort, zo comfort zones the truth is comfort zones are not really about comfort. They are about fear. All of you fear something. You're all scared of something. That's the truth. Break the chain of fear and get out of it. Once you do, you will learn to enjoy the process of taking risk and find it stimulating, growing, and motivating. Does everybody understand what I mean by that? The more risk you take, the more excitement you'll get in your life. Do you understand that, Nazgul? For you, Nazgul, the more risk you put on the business or the family business, the more enjoyment and thrill you will get. The next morning you wake up and you'll be so motivated to go down that road that you can't, nothing will stop you. But if you continuously to afraid of drag, exploring how you're going to in increase that business, if I'm right, you're in some sort of medical, surgical business, uh, cosmetic. If you don't start looking at how, what you're going to do different to all the other businesses in your profession, and you're always scared of the ramifications, then for the love of God, you're never going to know what good there is at the other side. The problem is, Nazgul, is in some businesses, you're very conservative. You think that it's safe to do it this way, because if we go outside this, something will go wrong, and we lose what we built. But Nazgul, people like Steve Jobs, if they didn't put a risk on their business, do you think that Apple Corporation would be what it is today? No. Do you think that if Amazon, when the guy who started Amazon didn't take the risk of building warehouses with robot and robotic arms and um, electronic systems that can pack 20 to 30,000 parcels a day, do you think that Amazon would be where it is today? No. But when they started Nazgul, they were all like you. There was a fear. There was a fear. The guy at Amazon asked himself, can I really become the largest and most powerful e-commerce platform in the world? And every day he answered himself, if I don't try, I am not excited enough to wake up the next morning. And you have to ask yourself the same thing, Nazgul, when you and your family talk about business. You have to say to themselves, if we don't explore doing something different to all the others, 
we're forever never going to become richer. We're always going to be where we are today. It's the same as going to the moon. Beforehand, we were happy for astronauts to go to the moon. Now, society wants to travel to the moon as passengers, right? My dream is by the time I retire, I will buy a ticket to the moon. Even though I'm terrified, I will one day buy a ticket to space. I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford it because the price now is $2 million and that's way beyond what I can plan. But one day it will happen because it's a dream that I'm working towards. But 20 years ago, Nazgul, none of us ever dreamt of going to the moon as passengers. All right. Can you imagine if one day you and your husband could say to your kids, mommy and daddy are going on their second honeymoon. This honeymoon is going to be special. We're going to the moon. The business has made enough money to buy us return tickets to the moon. Wouldn't that, what would that do to your confidence, Nazgul? It would go over the moon, right? And this is the sort of dream that you need to have. I mean, you don't have to go to the moon, but you need to go outside your comfort zone. Do you understand what I'm saying, Nazgul? Okay, great. Um, Tashi, do you understand where I'm coming from, Tashi Gyalpo? Okay. So let me go back to the beginning. Um, uh, Persilin, uh, Julie Kyung, um, Angelito. Um, and where's the other young lady? Where's Miss Gwyn gone? Where has she run away to? Uh, I'm sure she's here somewhere. Um, Maria, Rosemary, you all need to get out of your comfort zone. You need to stop lying to yourselves like you are now. You're all just lying to yourselves. You're, you're telling yourself lies that one day it will happen, but none of you will ever allow it to happen because you're just living a fear that doesn't exist. Get out of your fear. All right. Did you hear me? Um, where is the young lady? Anyway, she's there somewhere. I hope you heard me. All right. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay. Okay. Number three, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So um, the young lady, um, that's working as a babysitter in Turkey, you have to be comfortable with fit, with being uncomfortable. So even if coming back to the Philippines and setting up your own business, you're afraid of losing money, that's okay. You need to be comfortable with that because doing business means taking risks. And if you can't even have enough stomach to take some risk, then you will never learn and you will never succeed. It's okay to be scared, but you have to step out of your wooden box and glass jar and do what you're afraid to do today. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to make mistakes. If we go back to the idea of meeting people and being afraid to meet people, if you start feeling a little panicked when talking to someone or talking to people about going back to your home country because you're afraid of all the money you've saved is going to be lost, then you don't even have confidence in yourself. If you stay long enough and practice often enough, it will soon start to become uncomfortable. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's okay to feel discomfort. It's okay to feel pain. It's okay to be scared of failure because if you're scared of failure, you have a definite road to success. If you're not scared of failure, you will never be successful. You need to outline to yourself, what are the benefits? You see here we said being scared or being uncomfortable is okay. It is. As long as you say to yourself, at the end of the road, even if I'm scared, here are the benefits in me being scared for a while. It's going to change my life. Just imagine if Vevi could come to Singapore and get $2,000 a month instead of five or $800 a month, it would change her life and her family's life. Make sure you dig deep to help lower your mind's initial resistance to change. You're going to need to think about it. Do your homework. 
A good place to start is by outlining the benefits of you changing your life. So the first thing you have to do is outline the fears and what would be the benefits of you overcoming those fears. Make sure you think beyond what you're thinking today. Make sure you go beyond saying to yourself, um, my fear is that I lose my money and not make money. My fear is I don't want to risk it. If you don't have a fear, you will never become successful. And make sure you dig deeper. Don't just say, I want to make more money. That's stupid. You have to set yourself goals. I want to become the queen of um, uh, cosmetic surgery. I want to be the queen of nail polish or nail salons. I want to be the best looking girl working in the restaurant in Singapore. I want to be the most attractive young Indonesian mother walking down the street with my children so that somebody's going to offer me a job. Don't hide in your shoes just because you're afraid of public perception. All of us sometimes are afraid to buy our first house because when we buy our first house, we need a mortgage, we need a loan. But if you never get yourself a loan and buy a house, you will never own a house and you will forever be renting a house and be a failure. So how do you get out of this? How do you overcome being afraid? It's to say to yourself that you want to adapt or adopt a growth mindset. Psychologically, you want to say to yourself that even though I'm afraid now, if I can live the fear, my mindset will change. Because in the back of my mind, providing I'm scared, I work harder to make sure that it doesn't happen. The harder I work, the more successful I'll be. If you want to overcome your resistance, you must believe that change is possible. No one likes wasting their time and your mind is no different. For the young lady in Turkey, that's exactly what you're doing. You've blocked yourself behind resistance of fear and that will never be overcome unless you change. One of the best ways to overcome this issue is to adopt growth mindset. A growth mindset is to keep looking in the mirror, keep changing the way you look and keep making sure that you feel positive about yourself and your image. The better you look, the more confident you look, the more positive and the more positive thoughts you have. The more positive your thoughts are, the more positive mindset that you have, whether it's because you look in the mirror and you see a more confident or younger you, <coughs> or whether it's because you say to yourself and put it on paper how you're going to make yourself more confident, you need to do that. It's your mindset. <coughs> the best way to push somebody's mindset is by looking yourself at the mirror on a daily basis and keep telling yourself, look at me, I've changed. I don't longer look like the miserable person I used to look. Even though I'm working as a housekeeper or a maid or a, a helper, I may be a helper cleaning toilets, mopping toilets, cooking during the day. But at night when I take a shower and go into my room to rest, I need to make myself feel confident in myself. I need to change my mindset. I need to start looking at or thinking of or dreaming of the future not dreaming of what I'm going to do tomorrow as a housekeeper. Okay, the next one is see failure as a teacher. Many of us are so afraid of failure that we would rather do nothing than take a shot at our dreams. Treat failure as a teacher. People who fail succeed. People who never fail will never succeed. How can you take that lesson to your next adventure to increase your chances of success? Ask yourself. Ask yourself, what will I do if I never take a chance? Will I always stay a loser like I am now? 
ladies and gentlemen, there's one quick way to build positive, positive emotions. There's one way to boost your confidence. They say that a holiday is as good as a new life. Step away from what you're doing at the moment and think about where you want to go. What are your fears? Ask yourself, look in the mirror. Say to yourself, for the last two or three years, I've looked like this. Is every time I look in the mirror, do I always feel the same fear that I feel? If that is the answer, it's time for you to get a new look. In business or in psychology, we say a new look is as good as a holiday. When you go on holidays, you usually come back all fresh. And if uh, Nazgul goes on a holiday for six days on a cruise, she comes back to work and for the first day, she's full of excitement. Then she sees where all the bills and all the mistakes her staff have made. And then life goes back to the same old boring habit. Am I right, Nazgul? I'm right, right? I know I'm right. Okay, so what you need, Nazgul, is you need to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what do I do to give myself a fresh look on the business or a, a fresh look on the way I want to move forward? How do I give myself a fresh look on life so that all the fears I've got can be motivated by my fresh look on perspective or my fresh perspective on the way I'm going to do it? So whether it's your appearance, whether it's your mindset, something has to change, all right? Something has to change. They say that what goes up must come down, correct? What goes in must come out. They also say that everybody comes from God and will return to God one day in a different form. The point is that if you believe that you're going to live forever, ladies and gentlemen, I, I hate to tell you, I don't want to scare the daily living lights out of you, but none of us will live forever. Whether you die at 150, 170, 190, it's going to happen one day. Okay. The point is that if you don't take a chance now, it will never change. You will die the way you are today. Do you understand that, Mr. Nasik? Wave your hand, Nasik. Good. Excellent. All right. Gabriel, do you understand what I'm talking about, Gabriel? Good on you, mate. The finger, wave your hand, mate. Wave your hand. Show me your confidence. All right. Do you understand what I'm talking about, Vincent, cashier? Wave your hand, Vincent. Stop sleeping on me. Wave your hand. Thank you, Vincent. Okay. Tin Mal, it's all about you making the change. Because if you don't make the change, you will go, whether it's to heaven or whether it's to the casket jar, whatever it is, whatever your religious belief is, that's where you're going to end up. And you've got two choices. You end up having achieved what you want in life or hiding behind the comfort zone. Because when you go to heaven, you can't come out of the comfort zone. It's already too late. All right. And for those of you who are not going to heaven, I don't know where you're going, but you know, um, one way or the other, the comfort zone will be too late. All right? Okay? Yes, Norilla, it's the truth. You only get one chance in life. All right? And for you, Norilla, you have a lot of comfort zone to come out of. Me and you have been talking for months, like Nazgul and like some of the other girls, and I still don't see you coming out of your comfort zone. All right? You need to face reality in our school. You need to start saying to yourself, what am I really fearing in life? Where do I really want to be? Am I only here because it's what my family needs and because I feel safe? But that's not really your comfort zone, Nazgul. You have aspirations to achieve a lot more, but you're afraid to do it. Do you understand that, young lady? Do you understand that, Narilla? Narilla? Yes, Narilla. Shake your head, Narilla. Wave your hand, Narilla. Monkeys shake their heads. Confident people wave their hands. All right? Good girl. Wave your hand. Good girl. Nice to see you tonight. All right. Okay. Okay. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? All right. Let's go back. Gwyn, do you understand what I'm talking about, Gwyn? 
Where are you, Gwyn? Why do you keep running away, Gwyn? Wave your hand, Gwyn. Don't raise your finger like a monkey. Wave your hand. Where are you? Wave your hand. Good girl. Excellent. All right. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, ask yourself, if you fear failure as a teacher, then treat failure as a teacher. All right. So, if you're a teacher and you teach someone to improve, when you fail, treat yourself as a teacher and teach yourself how to improve. Treat every lesson as an adventure, not just as another boring day, as Gwyn seems to be treating her days. Number five, baby steps. Do it in gradual steps. Do not try to do it all on the same day. For the love of God, don't go and change your hair to purple, Gwyn, because then the company might say to you, look very unprofessional. Don't go and change your hair to pink, Gwyn, because that might be too loud seeing you work for a conservative audit company. Do it in slow steps. Look at yourself and see what your comfort zone is and step out of it whether it's in the way you lead people, the way you look, or the way you behave. Do it in steps, baby steps. Remember, when babies are born, they crawl. Then they try to stand up and they fall. They try again, they succeed. Then they walk. Then they try to run, they fall. They fall so many times that they hurt their backside, then eventually they learn how to walk. Slowly, they learn how to run. You are the same. All right, always do it step by step. Do you all understand that? Okay, do not do something stupid and kill your chances from day one. If you have saved up $100,000, for the love of God, don't go and throw it all into renting a shop and have no money to buy stock. Think of it, do it step by step. Remember, get out of your comfort zone but make sure you do it in a stage, in a staged way where you're going to actually be able to reach the end target. Hang out with risk takers. And this is serious. This is really serious. All of you, how many of you here go out with the same friends? Okay, Julie Kang. I bet you go out every week with other people from your country who are all doing similar jobs, okay? And they are not prepared to take risk because they're afraid. Every time you go out with them, you're wasting your time and you're causing yourself fear. Start going out with people who are motivated and want to encourage you to change. Do you understand that, Julie? Yes or no, Julie, wave your hand. Good girl. Gwyn T. Sal, do you understand what I said about that? So Gwyn, the next time you go out with your boyfriend or with your girlfriends, ask yourself, when I go out with these people, did they do anything to motivate me for me to break out of my comfort zone? Or do they always talk about the same boring stuff about, oh, I only make this much money this month. And forever, I have to plan how much I'm going to spend because I don't want to be in debt. Oh, I don't want to get married because if I get married, I will be in debt to buy a house. That's stupid. Everybody's going to get married one day. Otherwise, you don't enjoy life. What's life about? Okay. For Gwyn, if Gwyn doesn't have a boyfriend yet, it's because either two things. Either Gwyn hasn't found the right boyfriend or there's no boyfriend good enough for Gwyn. I'm not sure which one it is, but I'm sure she knows. All right. Now, there's two things I have to warn Gwyn of. Don't just go out with a boyfriend for the sake of having a boyfriend. If the boyfriend Gwyn doesn't motivate you or push you outside your comfort zone, then what is he going to do? He's going to depress you and forever you'll be in the milk bottle in your comfort zone. Do you understand that, Gwyn? All right. That goes for you too, Julie. That goes for you too, um, uh, all of you. 
All right. And that goes for you, Mr. Nasik Ain. If you go out with a girl, make sure the girl is as educated as you. She has the same level of confidence as you. Because if you go out with just some girl that given up on her life that's not studying and just wants to be a housewife all their life, then what's going to happen to you, Nasik? For the first 20 years of your marriage, you'll be working two jobs to support her. What you want is to look for a partner who's going to work as well and help you. So don't get yourself into the loop where you just do something for the sake of doing it. Do you understand that, Nasik? Always think, what advantages is this person going to bring to me? Are they going to motivate me? Are they going to depress me? The next time Nazgul goes out to lunch with somebody from the bank, she has to ask herself, if I take this goddamn bank manager out for lunch, what am I going to get from him? Is he just going to get a free lunch and tell me that one day I'll be big enough to borrow more money or expand my business? If that's the case, no need to buy him lunch. I don't need to see him. Tell him to stay at the bank. But if she thinks that this bank manager is prepared to write her a check and invest in her business so she can grow it, that's somebody she wants to take out to lunch. Do you understand that, Nazgul? Yes, Nazgul, shake your head. Don't smile at me. Shake your head. All right. Okay. Do you all understand that? Okay. Life is about where you're going and what you need to succeed. Stop wasting your time doing things that keep you in your comfort zone. All right. What do you do if you go to a shop and you're not happy? What do you do? You don't go back, right? Yes or no? You don't go back. If you live in Singapore and go to a hawker center and buy noodles and the noodles are too salty, do you go back or you go elsewhere? You go elsewhere, correct? But we don't go back just for the sake of going back because I feel sorry for the hawker because um, if he doesn't get my money, he's going to close down. It's not my problem. The problem is his food is too damn salty. And if I keep eating his salty food, I'm going to die. Because too much salt is no good for you. That's a fact of life, right or wrong? Come on, wave your hands, everybody. Is it right or wrong? Good, excellent. Okay, so remember, there is no substitute for this step. If you want to become better at something, you must start by hanging out with the people who are doing what you want to do and start em emulating them. Almost inevitably, their influence will start to have an effect on your behavior. That goes from appearance to the way you talk, the way you behave, the way you talk about business and the type of business you do. Okay, um, sorry, just bear with me for now. Okay, next one. Be honest with yourself when you are trying to make excuses. Do not lie to yourself. Do not say to yourself that, you know, it will happen because I need to save more money. The lady that's working in Turkey, 12, 15 years, for the love of God, if you haven't saved enough money, in 12 or 15 years, you're never going to save enough money. You might as well give that dream away. Do you understand that, everyone? Don't make excuses, Gwyn, just because your parents had a dream for you that you don't want to grow your career. You want to grow your career. And for you, Gwyn, part of your career growth is to take on more leadership roles. And that means teaching, training, developing the people under you and around you so that the boss recognizes your ability and eventually puts you in charge of others rather than just working as a clerk. Identify how stepping out will benefit you. Remember, I asked you to write down the failures and then the benefits of what will happen if you corrected that failure. I also want you to write down, out once you identify the failures and the benefits, I want you to tell me exactly what that benefit will mean to you. I don't only want you to tell me the benefit, I want to know what it will mean to you. 
what will the ability to engage in public speaking do for your personal and professional growth? Let's talk about that. Remember before I asked you to introduce yourself and do it with confidence. If you're able to talk about what you want and yourself confidently, what's that going to do for your ability and courage to come out of your comfort zone? All right. Some of you don't display signs of courage here today. Look at Angelito Velasco. Angelito is looking at the table, not looking at me. Sometimes I ponder whether he's got confidence. Maybe he's just looking at his computer screen. Ladies and gentlemen, always remember that when you're trying to achieve something, when you're trying to achieve something, it's about you demonstrating the level of confidence needed to achieve that. It's about you being focused on what you want to achieve. It's about you being able to get to what you want. That's what it's about. It's about you being able to step out of your comfort zone. It's about you being able to engage with people around you that are going to motivate you. It's about you being able to engage in the activity that you dream of doing one day. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Good. I'll give you an example. I went to Thailand about three years ago. And I was staying at a five-star hotel called the Intercontinental Hotel. And this girl in the lounge came up to me and said, Sir, you should go and get a manicure and a pedicure. Sorry, what? A manicure and a pedicure. She said, yes, sir. For young businessmen, it's fashionable that you don't just cut your own nails. You go to a salon. I'll make an appointment for you. And a young lady will give you a, a manicure and a pedicure. This, ladies and gentlemen, was 17 years ago in Thailand. That manicure and pedicure was the most expensive experience I had. It cost me 122 US dollars because it was one of the most expensive manicure pedicure salons at a five-star hotel. I found out later that if I went to a shopping center in Thailand, it would have cost me $50, but no. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, but it was an experience that I went through. And since then, I get manicure and pedicure every month. And it cost me probably $70 in Singapore every month. But when I first did it, did I have the confidence? No, because for me, I've never tried it before. I've never had two young ladies giving me a pedicure and I've never had two young ladies, one lady on each side, giving me a manicure for each hand. I had like two ladies, one doing my right hand, one doing my left hand, and then one lady doing my right foot, one lady doing my left foot. And then on top of that, when they finished, they offered me a glass of champagne and said, We'd like to see you again one day, sir. Well, for 120 US dollars, I deserve the champagne. It was good. But anyway, what I'm saying is I was afraid to do it when they told me about it. And the hotel staff in the executive lounge where businessmen usually go and sit and relax told me, Mr. Wally, I've been seeing you for two weeks and your nails are getting really long and you go to the office every day. I need to arrange a manicure and a pedicure for you. But what was the real incentive for her? She got a commission and she focused on turning me from somebody who had no confidence in getting a, a pedicure and a manicure to somebody who now does it every month. Yes, do you understand that, Mr. Amala? We need to congratulate my co-host. My co-host, Mr. Amala, got married last week, and he's now a newly married guy. Everybody, give him a big hand. My deepest congratulations, Amala. God bless you, Amala. We wish you a very happy life. Thank you, Amala. So, um, Amala, if you want to please your wife, you need to get a, a, a manicure and a pedicure every month. All right, mate? but I don't know if they have those places in India. I'm sure they do. All right. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is all about stepping out of your comfort zone. For until now, I am afraid to go to the dentist. Does everybody know that? Is there anybody here afraid of the dentist? Yes or no? If I walk into a dental clinic 
and I see a drill and hear the noise, I will run out the door. All right. I have a dental phobia. I hate anything that's called dentist. I think they are butchers and murderers. So when somebody says they're a dentist, they become my biggest enemy until now. The only way I go to a dentist, if he gets an anesthesiologist to give me an injection and put me to sleep before I open my mouth. All right. But why is that? Because I have never been out of my comfort zone. I have been afraid of dentists ever since I went to a boarding school and the dental nurse used to put me under pain once every three months. Because at boarding school, there was only two dental nurses and all the students had to see them. And every two months, she did all the fillings, polished our teeth, and we'd scream in pain and she'd just poke us with injections. So what did she do to me? She locked me in a comfort zone of saying, I will never go to a dentist unless they put me to sleep. Until now, I am afraid to step out of that comfort zone. Do you all understand that? We all have the realities of a comfort zone. But now I have a five-year-old daughter. She goes to the dentist and she loves it because the little dentist gives her lollipops and chewing gum and tells her to brush her teeth and gives her different flavored um, toothpaste every month. And daddy pays for it. $200 a consultation. Daddy's happy to pay for it. But now she says, daddy, when are you going to let doctor clean your teeth? And I have to keep making excuses. But one day I will have to step out of my comfort zone. Otherwise, my daughter is going to be calling me a chicken. All right. And she already does that at five years old. She said, Daddy, Mommy told me you're scared of the dentist. So when are you going to get them to clean your teeth? And she reminds me of that every time she goes for her dental checkup. All right. So we all have comfort zones. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yes or no? Yes or no? Guys, when I went out with my first girlfriend, she was Italian. Please don't tell this story to anyone. This is personal. You're a very lucky group to hear this. I used to live in Melbourne. I used to go to the University of Melbourne and Parkville. I used to live in Ligon Street, Carlton, in a very expensive house worth millions that my parents owned. Every night, I used to go to a pizza shop called Romantica Pizza, R-O-M-A-N-T-I-C-A. I think it's still there, but I think it's changed hands. And every night for a year, I would go in and this girl with long, curly black hair, wearing a sexy mini skirt, black leather and a white shirt, would come up to me with her shirt half open and say, would you like your espresso tonight, mate? Yes. Would you like a glass of red wine tonight? Yes. Would you like your capricciosa pizza? Yes. I would get out my university lectures and I would sit there writing essays and she would keep coming up to me and doing this to me and rubbing my shoulder. And I'd say, could you leave me alone? I've got an essay to write. It took me about a year and a half to break out from my comfort zone and say to her one night, hey, listen, can I buy you dinner? And she looked at me and she said, for the love of Jesus Christ, for two years, I've been waiting for you, the Australian guy with the long curly hair, blue eyes, wearing Armani jeans, to one day say, will you take, would you like to go out to dinner with me? I looked at her and said, what do you mean? She says, I've been waiting for you to two years to ask me that stupid question. Of course, I'll go out to dinner. I said, what do you mean? She says, you see, for two years, you come here every night. You're always dressed in Armani T-shirts. You're always dressed in the most expensive Armani jeans. I've always dreamt of going out with a guy with long curly. I had long curly hair with blue eyes. And I always used to dress in the most expensive uh, Armani shirts that I could buy. And my father used to scold me because I used to spend $200 for a T-shirt because he used to give me pocket money and I used to waste it on t-shirts. And he used to say, why don't you go to the normal supermarket and buy a t-shirt for $10? Why do you need those t-shirts? So after this young lady told me that, I went home and told my father, dad, 
my $200 Armani shirt just got me a date with one of the most beautiful Italian waitresses I have ever dreamt of even going to lunch with. Ladies and gentlemen, the next day at three o'clock, I met her outside the gates at University of Melbourne and we went out for lunch. It was the longest lunch I've ever had. It took three hours. We went to this little Italian cafe. We ordered espresso and then we ordered gelati. And we sat there eating gelati and drinking espresso for three hours. It was the best lunch I ever had. And it probably the cheapest lunch because she paid for it and it only cost her 20 bucks because she invited me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, me and that lady went out for three years. That lady eventually married a Frenchman. She lives in France and has her own nightclub and restaurant. Now you're all gonna ask yourself, why didn't I marry her? Because she was part of one of the richest Italian mafiosa families in Australia. Her father was called Papa Gianarelli. And one day she invited me to her house for lunch. And I said, why? I'm only a friend. She said, now you're going to meet my family because if my father catches you walking out with me and he doesn't know you, he'll break your legs. We've been going out for a year in secret. I went to her beautiful big white house down a street in a taxi, not knowing what to expect. And two security guards opened the gate for me and said, sir, is Madame or Mr. Gianarelli expecting you today? I said, no, I'm here to see Miss so-and-so. Oh, you're here to meet their daughter. You're the boyfriend. Yes, we're expecting you, sir. Welcome to the Gianarelli mansion. So I went in and there was this great big white house with this big dining room table. And she had four brothers which were twice my size, all wearing black suits and black ties. And the mother was wearing the most elegant gown and her younger sisters were all there. Her grandmother and grandfather were there. The father sat at the top of the table. The mother sat to the right and I was to sit to the left. And the young daughter was sitting next to her mother. And the father put his hand on top of my hand and said, young man, I hear you've been dating my daughter. Is that right? I said, yes, sir. He said, don't call me, sir. Call me Papa. Papa? Okay. Okay, Papa. Yeah, I've been dating your daughter. And he said to me, you see this little gun, the revolver I have here? This is to remind you that if you ever upset my daughter, I will use this. But welcome to the family. Ladies and gentlemen, I enjoyed my lunch. I ate the spaghetti bolognese. And every time I chewed on the meatball, I wondered, what does he mean, welcome to the family? Anyway. To cut the story short, me and his daughter went out for one and a half year, and then the father got convicted of grand larceny because they used to own funeral parlors. So what used to happen, they used to go and collect the body from the house. As with any Italian funeral parlor, they bring the body back, they make it up, they put makeup, the family gives them the dress and the jewelry, and they all the expensive jewelry usually goes down with the dead. But what did he and his sons do? After the family came to the funeral parlor, they looked at the body with all the jewelry and the makeup. They were supposed to close the coffin and seal it with red wax. And then the coffin would be taken to the cemetery that day for burial. The family would assume that all the jewelry was on the dead. But these guys were very smart, but I wasn't as smart as them. They would open the coffin before it went to the, the cemetery. They would steal all the gold and put it in the box. Then they would seal the coffin and bury it underground. But one day they made a mistake. They sold some of the jewelry in a pawn shop in Sydney. And a member of the family of the Italian mother who died found the jewelry in a pawn shop. Eventually it got reported to the police. The father, the three sons, and his brother got convicted of prison sentence for over 22 years each. They went down in history as the, the, the biggest white-collar crime thieves in their life. The business went to somebody else in the family, and their daughter ran away to France, and that's why I lost the love of my life. So... What do you think that did to my, my comfort zone? 
was I comfortable going out with another Italian girl? Never in my life. I lost the love of my life, okay? Remember, it took me two years for her to ask me to go out to dinner or lunch, okay? And it took me two years before I lost her. And till now, I will never go out with another Italian girl again because I'm happily married. But I broke out of my comfort zone. Do you understand what I mean by that? So one's comfort zone is not only about business. It's about you breaking out of something in your life that is going to give you the confidence to do something else. The day she asked me to go out for lunch was the day I changed. Every time I went to a bar and saw a young girl smile, I would go up to her and say, hey, you smiled. Can I buy you a drink? But why did I do it? Because that night when she asked me, um, I've been waiting for you to ask me for two years. Finally, you're going to take me out to lunch. I realized that I was good to ask. I was good looking enough to ask. I was no longer afraid that I was going to get slapped across the face. I'm sure you guys sometimes have asked a girl out and she slapped you across the face or she's told you to get lost. I'm sure you girls once in your young life, Nazgul, you were asked out by some guy and you told him to get lost because he didn't have confidence, all right? I was afraid of the same thing, but I broke out of my comfort zone and you all need to do the same. And I'm only sharing this with you to motivate you. I'm not sharing it with you to show off. For the love of God, don't ever tell my wife, you know, about my first Italian girlfriend, all right? Because after the Italian girlfriend, then there was a Filipino girlfriend for four years, but she ended up marrying a doctor from the Philippines and she dumped me because she wanted a doctor. So let's not talk about that either. All right. So it's all about your comfort zone, comfort zone. Do you all understand what I mean by that? Yes or no? Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, don't take yourself too seriously. Have fun. I took myself too seriously for two years because I was too shy to ask this Italian girl if she would go out to lunch with me. Risk taking will inevitably involve failure and setbacks that will sometimes make you look foolish to others. That's okay. Be happy to roll with the punches when others poke fun. And that goes out to all of you. It goes out to all of you guys. It's a reality. It's a reality, guys, that sometimes you might go to a bar. Uh, where is that young man? Um, where is he? He's gone away. Um, yes. Nay, you might go out to a bar one day with your friends and you might ask a girl out for a drink and she might tell you, go away, mate. You're too young and you, you're not even dressed for me. I don't want to see you. Go away. You're not my type. But the more times she does that to you, nay, the next time you'll come more prepared. It's okay to get poked. It's okay to get told you're not good enough because the more that you fail, the stronger you will succeed. Do you understand that, everyone? Do you understand that? Romel, they lost. Do you understand what I'm saying, Romel? Romel, I'm sure that in your life, girls have told you to get lost. You have been dumped before. I'm confident of that, all right? But because you were dumped by some girl, one day, if you haven't already found the perfect girl, you will, because that's part of life. Do you understand that, Romel? Wave your hand, Romel. Don't be shy. That's it, Romel. Good on you, mate. I love you. All right. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? The same for Julie. Julie, one day, you're going to find a rich guy in Singapore or in Australia or somewhere and he's going to ask you out for dinner, and you're probably going to say no because you lack the confidence. And then he'll come back a week later and say, listen, you were sitting at this cafe two days ago. I want to buy you lunch. And every time he asks you, that's going to motivate you to break out of your comfort zone and do it. You understand what I'm saying? All right. So ladies and gentlemen, tonight has been about getting out of your comfort zone, not only as individuals, but the reason I use individual examples is to try to get you away from being scared. I hope that me embarrassing myself gives you a level of confidence that you need to start telling yourself the truth and reality. All right. Do you understand that, guys? 
Do you understand that all? Yes or no? All right, good, excellent. Thank you, Jesus Botero. I appreciate your acknowledgement. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with the presentation. All right, so don't take yourself too seriously. Enjoy life as it goes. Focus on the fun part. You know, I said to you earlier, the best pizza I ever ate was the night she asked, I asked her, can I buy you lunch? Remember, ladies and gentlemen, a comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows in a comfort zone. I would never have experienced the most beautiful Italian girl in my life had I never had the guts after two years to ask her, can I buy you lunch? Because I thought I wasn't good enough. I was living in fear. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Jobs, the man who founded Apple said, remembering, remembering that you are going to die is best way to know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are always naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs followed his heart. He created one of the most successful companies in the world. He created Apple. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, Apple is one of the richest and most successful telephone companies in the world. But there's a problem with Apple. Steve Jobs left Apple a blueprint for 20 years. That blueprint stopped about five or seven years ago. His mate, Mr. Crook, Tim Cook, um, has not been able to come up with the same drive for Apple because he doesn't have the same vision. He doesn't he has not been able to step out of his comfort zone and create the impossible and take the risks that Steve Jobs took because Steve Jobs had nothing to lose. Steve Jobs knew 10 years before he died that he had a disease. And as he said, if I know I'm going to die, I might as well give it my best. Steve Jobs died in hospital. Steve Jobs fought serious illness for years. He did not tell the world. He knew that he had created a company and he had built an empire with people that he had recruited and employed to do the job and were doing it very well. He thought that a 20-year blueprint would see them through. Well, it didn't. They had problems. They recalled the first phone two years after that. They did a total worldwide recall, which was the first time they'd ever done that. In the past, there were small recalls, but not total. They did that a couple of years after Steve Jobs died. Since then, um, they're changing and they may yet become number one in the world again. But they have slipped from number one to, I think they're now number two or three. Why? Because Apple, Apple also has what they call a comfort zone. And the new management at Apple, Tim Cook, is not prepared to go outside that comfort zone the same as Steve Jobs did. Can I ask you guys, you all know Madonna? Does everybody know Madonna, the pop star? Yes? Let me ask you, um, I'm not being rude here, but uh, Nazgul, if you ever became a pop star, can you get out of your comfort zone and perform like Madonna? Yes or no? 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 Okay, all right. You see, that's what I mean, comfort zone. You need to ask yourself, what is your comfort zone? Do you think Madonna enjoys what she does? For the love of God, she does. Madonna designs every costume herself. She pays thousands of dollars to make a shirt that is ripped and holes in it just for her to perform on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Madonna doesn't buy her costume from a secondhand shop. She actually gets it made by the world's best designers. Then she gets a knife and rips holes in it just so she can wear it on stage. And she only wears it once. Why? Because she stepped out of her comfort zone. She came up with the song many years ago. Don't cry for me, Argentina. And she still sings that today. Why do you think she sings that song? Why? What is Madonna singing about? She's not singing about what she's sad about she's telling the country her homeland that she has always loved don't cry for me because i left you be happy for me because i went to america and became successful 
Don't cry for me, Argentina, because one day I'll come back. Do you understand what Madonna is saying to you? That if you do not make it your plan to change your life and get out of your comfort zone, you will go to your grave as a failure. Does everybody understand that? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wally Rauder. I'm an Australian. I have been a motivator, an intellectual, and an academic for some 35 to 38 years now. I have been a motivator to CEOs of companies and governments all over the world. My dream is to see you become successful because the day I see Nazgul as president and CEO of the largest um, cosmetic surgical company in the world, I might even get free Botox injections, who knows? All right, um, but um, it's a dream. Anyway, um, so what I'm saying is, is the fact is that if you don't step out of your comfort zone, win, 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 look at the camera, win. I wanna see your face, smile, win, win. Okay, if you don't step out of your comfort zone and do what you've never done before, you will never know what's hiding behind. Do you understand that, Gwyn T. Sal? Yes? I love your white teeth. You must have brushed them very hard today, right? Good girl. My teeth are yellow. I haven't brushed my teeth yet. Yes, Jesus, I see your white teeth every week. You're making me jealous. You must have a very good dentist. But remember, I've got dental phobia. All right, okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So from me to all of you, um, I very much hope that you've learned something. My dear Amala, can you put everybody my email address in the chat box? eh, full stop, wally1 at gmail.com. If you want me to give you advice about your failures, you must send me an email in the next three working days. The actual subject should be out of my comfort zone, out of my comfort zone, then your name. So out of my comfort zone, Nazgul Kayapova in the subject line. If you send me your homework within the next three days, I will reply to you, whether it's one line or three lines, but I will motivate you, even if it's the last thing I do, all right? Because for me, my goal is to make you successful. Do you understand that, Juvian G. Lopez? Make sure I get your homework lady no more excuses that i was busy or i was out exercising make sure i get your homework all right it's time for you to become successful juvian look at the camera juvian don't be shy you're an extremely young successful young lady have the confidence juvian look at yourself in the mirror juvian say to yourself tonight it's time for me to get out of my comfort zone do you understand that Everybody repeat after me. It's time for me to get out of my comfort zone. Everybody say it. Say it. Come on. Good. Excellent. 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 All right. Does anybody have any questions? If you do, can you wave your hand and I'll talk to you now quickly. Who wants to talk to me? Okay. I've got, oh, oh slow down. I've got two already. Wait till I ask for more. Uh, Lorenzo, you're number two in the queue. All right, let's talk to Norita. Uh, can you unmute your microphone, please, ma'am? Go ahead, Norita. How can I help you tonight? Hello. Hello, sir. Hi, Norita. Um, Good to see you again. Yeah, I'm I'm so happy. Yes, I'm so happy and enjoy. Uh, Thank yes. you. You're welcome. Thank you're welcome. You. Thank hey, you so much. Have you, have, have you learned anything about um, breaking yes, out of your yes. comfort zone tonight? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Lots of yes information I got it. So You're I have to practice. Uh, yes, I have to practice no and I have to use in my <laughs> every Okay, you're welcome. For all of you, ladies and gentlemen, um, next Saturday we are exploring a topic of preparing your financial plan. Um, as part of your business plan and as part of starting your dream or growing your business. Um, the session will be delivered to one of my esteemed colleagues who's been CFO to one of the biggest companies in the world. That will be next Saturday at five o'clock. I encourage you all to join me and my guest speaker about um, building a successful business plan to carry you through post-COVID-19, whether you're an existing business or a new business. 
we'll look at all the financial instruments and all the financial successes and formulas you need to take you down that journey. Please join me. Um, anybody else want to talk to me? Okay, let's go to Lorenzo who waved his hand. Hi, Lorenzo. Would you like to unmute your microphone? Hi, Lorenzo. Good evening. Welcome to Bistalk 41. How can I help you tonight? Are you there, Lorenzo? I'm sorry, Lorenzo. I can't hear you. There's something wrong with your microphone, sir. You need to fix your microphone, Lorenzo. I'll come back to you. Okay, who's next? Um, I saw a hand. Uh, Mr. Jesus Botero, can you unmute your microphone, sir? Good evening. Welcome right. to this talk 41. How can I help Thank you tonight? Thank you. So I just want to ask a question. Uh, this is not regard with the topic, but uh, sorry, no. So after the, uh, the eight months uh, course in Kingston International School, uh, two of my friends will be going to Singapore to uh, personally get their certificate. Would be possible for them to be able to find job while they're in Singapore? Before they come to Singapore to collect their certificates personally, I suggest you get them to email me or contact me directly and I'd be happy to give them some advice, yes. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure, Jesus. And I want, I want to see you in Singapore one day. God bless you, man. You have a big Thank future. You. And when you're CEO of your own company, remember, I deserve a coffee. All right, mate? <laughs> yes, for sure. It's my dream. Thank you, sir. Um, would anybody else like to talk to me? Okay, I've got five, seven, nine, eleven hands now. All right, Lorenzo, have you fixed your microphone? Can you unmute your microphone, Lorenzo? How can I help you, sir? Yeah, are you get to me now? Yes, I can. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, many times I say communication and you don't reply me. That's why I want to know. Well, Lorenzo, I talk to everybody and anybody. As long as I see your hand and your microphone works, I speak to about 90 people a day in different no, lectures. No, uh, so, no, no, Lorenzo, I, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lorenzo, let me finish, please. I am always yeah. here for you. If you don't get me here, you can always email me or message me, and I will always be there like I am for all my students. All right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I have seen you communication on WhatsApp. So when, when, when was the last time, time Lorenzo? Uh, uh, in recent time, you do want to test you so that you can sell it. Uh, what was it about, Lorenzo? What was the, what was the question? Can you just remind me, and I'll reply to you it today. It was our big talk, and uh, we needed a, a copy of your license, and uh, you do want to what's up? Okay, yeah, and okay. Just let me explain, Lorenzo. This talk is a motivation session, my dear sir. I do not provide copies of lessons to BizTalk because BizTalk is not a lesson. The only time BizTalk is shared is if I'm doing a subject like financial planning or something where there is slides for you that you need or sample documents or Excel sheets that you need. Now, if that is the case, I usually hand those out during the session. Now, if you don't get them and you WhatsApp me, Providing there is relevant material, you will get that material back within three working days. However, for all other Biz Talks like tonight, you can simply go to our YouTube channel, The Apex Stories, and all my YouTube sessions are recorded on video for you to review and play and download as many times as you like. So please forgive me, Lorenzo, if it's a general question like that, I get about 700 messages a day. If I fail you i will personally make sure i respond in future but if it's something um that you want to ask me lorenzo you want to ask me for advice or you want to talk about issues that i've discussed just message me mate and i'd be happy to ring you and talk to you no issue all right mate thank you it's my pleasure lorenzo welcome to biz talk and i look forward to seeing you at biz talk 42 god bless you lorenzo good luck Okay, um, who else can I talk to tonight? Anybody else? I see all these beautiful young ladies and there's a young lady here that I spoke to before that I need to give a quick nudge to because I'm afraid she forgot what I told her. Purcellin, are you still here? Purcellin, uh, Paligan? Purcellin, yes, did, you did you learn anything from everything I said to you tonight? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, I have okay. learned a lot. Uh, okay. So, now... Purcellin. Let me just ask you, what have you learned? Give me one summary. What's the biggest thing that you learned? I have learned that uh, I need to 
uh, go out from my comfort zone, being a nanny for how many years? 11 years here already in yeah, abroad. I, I want to go to the Philippines and then uh, okay, I would... But, yeah, you're right. You want to go to the Philippines, so stop yes. hiding behind the wall. Can I give yeah. you some quick advice, Persilin? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say yes. this. This is nothing against you. But this one thing about people like you, you're workaholics. You're a Filipino. You're a workaholic. Yeah. And sometimes you look at yourself, Persilin, and every day you see yourself looking the same old you. And you have this habit of saying, but I'm only a Filipino. This is what I am. All right. And yes. that's where you fail yourself. All right. What you need to do personally is this weekend, instead of saving your money and buying chocolate, is go and get yourself a fresh look. Go and get new makeup, get yourself a new hair look and look at yourself in the mirror again and say to yourself, today, I have decided that this is the start of the road to my dream. From here on in, every time I look at myself in the mirror, I am going to be looking at the future of Persilin Palagan achieving and breaking out of her comfort zone. Do you understand me that, Persilin? But Persilin, yes, the longer you keep looking at yourself the way you are, unfortunately, there's nothing to motivate you to change. I am not saying that because I don't like you. I'm not saying that because I want to offend you. I'm saying that so I cause enough hurt that you do something to change. Do you understand that, young lady? That's Let me true. leave you with a strong saying that I started teaching 20 years ago to CEOs. Where there is no pain, there is no gain. Do you understand oh. that? Yes, yes or no? Say it. No yes. pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Do you understand what that means? Yes, sir. So sometimes... That is, that is my fear, really, sir, uh, to lose my... Uh, assets to lose my money because you see sir i i am learning one thousand three hundred dollar here in with my work but i am afraid that i will lose one thousand two hundred dollar for just my business in the philippines but but Priscilla, 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 you've been working for 12 years you should have a lot of money in the bank <laughs> if you don't start spending it young lady you're never going to succeed do you understand that when you yes, die sir. your money will go to the grave with you do you understand that woman? Yes, sir. Persilin, what do you want to do? You want your money to be taken by all the relatives and the funeral parlor and your government, or you want to spend it and enjoy it? I what have already put it in the bank, actually, but, uh, but the I bank want is to... no good because if you die, the bank keeps it. What's the point putting it in the bank? Yes, sir. That is what I am thinking, sir. But I am afraid to lose that. To lose oh, personal, uh, personal, uh, do me a favor. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something to you, but I will let the lady say it to you. Everybody tell Persilin, tell her to go to a salon this weekend, get a new look, maybe black hair, looking like Madonna, something that makes her look young and attractive. All right, change that color orange hair, which is old fashioned. I'm not trying to upset you, I'm telling you the truth. Yes, yes. I'm a young, successful businessman, and probably all the women are gonna tell you the same thing. Look at Gwyn, where's Gwyn gone, the young lady from Vietnam? Gwyn, do you wanna give Persilin any advice about her appearance? I'll open the microphone for her, hold on. Gwyn, where are you, Gwyn? Are you there? Okay, Gwyn, give Persilin some advice. Go ahead, unmute your microphone. What do you suggest that Persilin does to give her confidence? Do you suggest she needs to change her look? Yeah. Tell her, say it. Maybe. Um, I, I, I don't stress her, her change her look, but if uh, she she wants to, 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 to change her look to be co become more confident and and with, uh, become more confident when she talks to her client, um, or her, her feel that her want to go out of her comfort zones, so he, he maybe try it. But I mean that, yeah, if yeah, she cool. feel comfortable with it, so just of course try. she has to want yeah. to do it. She has to be prepared. Is that right, Gwyn? Yes. She has to get out of the comfort zone of living in a jar like an old Filipino lady with orange hair looking like she's 50 years old like she looks today. She needs to get out of there and go and spend $100 in a young salon with a young 
hunky, good looking guy to make her look young and full of energy again. And every day when she looks, walks down the street, she's going to have guys looking at her and she's going to feel confident and she's going to feel the motivation that no matter what she does, she will learn from her mistakes and succeed in life. Otherwise, she's going to go to the grave and the only people that are going to spend her money are the tax office, Mr. Duterte's government and the Filipino government. Do you understand that, Persilin? And yes, Persilin, yes. listen carefully. I am not saying this to upset you. I am saying this to motivate you. And if I've upset you, I apologize. All right, young lady? No, no, sir. No, sir. Uh, that is my biggest uh, thing, sir, because you are a frank person to tell me everything. <laughs> Okay, great. I and, learned a lot from you. And you need to thank Gwyn for having the confidence to tell you that. Yes. She's a very courageous young lady. All right. Thank you, Gwyn. Thank you so much, Gwyn. You're my assistant teacher from now on, Gwyn. Okay, good on you. Is there anybody else that would like to talk to me before I go? Quickly wave your hands. Um, Madam Nazgul, how would you like how can I help you tonight? Welcome to Bistalk 41. Can you unmute your microphone, Nazgul? Hi, Nazgul. Oh, nice sir. to see you again. Go ahead. So, um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, sir. Yes, you're uh, welcome. Because, you know, um, it's, it's really important. Um, today, I had a very good spirit because of your stories, because of our uh, topic today. So, um, I think I will uh, write my homework to you to send uh, to you some uh, message. Yeah. And... Uh, I'd like to discuss with you through message, if it's okay, possible. Okay, you're, you're welcome to do that. Just send me a message and I will try okay. to get back to you. My, ple my pleasure, Nazgul, you're welcome. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you at this talk 42. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Good night. Um, I have another question. I, I have somebody, Maravik Areko Bonete. How can I help you? Good evening. Welcome to this talk 41. Yeah, Good hi, evening. go ahead. Good evening, Coach. It Good was evening. a very, uh, very knowledgeable day today. Thank you for yeah, that. It's for my me, pleasure. My question, my question, Coach, is do you think that uh, not going out with the comfort zone is a weak? Yes, it is a weakness. It absolutely is. Anybody who doesn't go out of their comfort zone is destined for failure. And if you can't go out of your comfort zone, you will go to the grave living in failure. Unfortunately, that's the reality of life. People who don't go out of the comfort zone will never live the life they wanted to live. They will never achieve their goals or ambitions. And I don't mean to upset anybody, Maravik, but that's, a, that's the truth. Okay, coach. Thank you so much, coach. It's my pleasure, ma'am. It's my pleasure. Anytime you're welcome. All right. Does anybody else want to talk to me? Just one moment. Yeah, okay. All right. So um, what we'll do then is there anybody else that want to ask me any questions, please ask. Okay, I can take two more questions. Number one is coming from Elu Soe. Hello, Elu. Go ahead, sir. Welcome to Bistalk 41 again. Go ahead. Unmute your microphone, sir. I can't hear you, Elu. Would you like to talk to me? Unmute your microphone. Yes, go ahead, sir. Are you there? I'm sorry, Alu, I can't hear you. There's something wrong with your microphone, sir. Anybody else want to talk to me? All right, ladies and gentlemen, from me and from my co-host down here in Singapore, I thank you all for joining me at this talk 41. As I said, it's been my pleasure talking to you here tonight. Hold on. Wait, hold on, hold on, Amala. Um, okay, I have Mr. Elu back. Hello, Elu. Can you unmute your microphone again quickly? I'm running against time, yes. sir. Go ahead. Yes, good, good evening, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. Hello. Okay, yes, go ahead. please, can I have, can I have your, your, your email? You, you um, said my it once, but I don't get my it. Co -host, my co-host will put it in the chat box. Mr. Amala, could you put my email in the chat box again, please? I'll spell it yes, out. Sir, thank you. It's thank EH. You, it's yeah. Echo Hotel, full stop, Wally, W A L L Y, number one at gmail.com. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, as my co host has mentioned to you already tonight, we are on social media. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. And we are at YouTube under the Apex Stories. 
for the love of God, please visit us on, on YouTube. Watch our videos. Invite all your friends, colleagues, people who work for you to join BizTalk. They've got nothing to lose. In actual fact, our certificates will add to their future and their reference folder. Um, but more importantly, they will learn and gain knowledge. If your friends are not students, please encourage them to join us because as you know, in your countries, the university qualifications you have are not recognized internationally. We at Kingston International School can give you a chance to change your life. Um, and no one, no one else, nowhere else in the world will you get to do it at the prices we offer you. I'm an academic, I'm not a salesman. I'm only telling you this because I believe it can help you. I'm not a sales consultant, I'm an academic, all right? But if you're interested, our sales team would love to help you and we have classes starting every 10 days, okay? All right, so is there anybody here that would like to ask me any questions? And um, I'd be happy to answer them. If not, uh, from me, from my co-host, Mr. Amala, um, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I bid you all good night. I love you all. God bless you all. Take care, everybody. Good night. I'll see you at this talk 42. Good night.